Welcome to to the the Everglow, Everglow. starring me, AB3, also known as Neil, here to help you live better, travel cheap, and overall enjoy a better quality of life by working less. Now, I've traveled the world, I've interviewed people, I've delved deep down inside of caves, and you name it, looking for answers. Answers to make me happier. And this all started because I was just cracking under the pressure of being a lawyer. And bear in mind, I don't even work at a big law firm, I handle my own law practice. But the energy of people was just pushing me to the brink. And so that's why I started the show. Episode 4, The Modular Lifestyle. Do you want to live free, but still get the bills paid? Welcome to what I refer to as the modular lifestyle, or what I also like to call 100 days of vacation a year. In this day and age, you can travel cheap, earn income via flexible part-time jobs, and still live life on your terms. Wondering what I'm talking about? Keep listening. And don't worry, this isn't some cheap pitch to get you to buy some product that I have. I really am not selling anything. People are waking up these days. Gone are the days of working 25 years and getting pensioned out at the ripe old age of 60 or 65 or even 70 these days. You know, the age when it can be too late to do some of the more physical, fun stuff. Unless you're working for the government, companies don't give pensions anymore. Do you think you'll save enough to retire on your own? Maybe, but unlikely since you never really know how long you're going to live. Nowadays, our generation doesn't really stick around in one company for an entire 30 years. We prioritize quality of life and instant gratification. If a job sucks, we generally don't stick around under the guise of, hey, at least I'm lucky to have a job. People these days can change their jobs like they change underwear, assuming they wear any. Hey, come on, I live in LA, you never know. We call this the pursuit of happiness. But now, being a modern day hippie can be easier than ever. You can earn an income at your leisure and even while you're traveling, so you can live the normalized, everyday nomadic lifestyle you want to while still having a roof over your head, food on the table, and actually a decent quality of life. Is it too good to be true? Not really. Here's how to do it. Let's start off with income, or what I call the modular part of the income. This is the most important part of the equation, as it is the one thing that separates you from living under a freeway overpass versus sleeping in a luxury condo. I'm going to break this section down into two components, active income and passive income. Active income. Active income is the money you actually work for and produce from your efforts. As someone who wants to work a flexible schedule, you have options like never before. Let's start with the first one. Uber. We've all heard of them. We've all used them. Almost anyone can apply to become a driver. And if you don't have a car, there are even services in some of the bigger cities where companies will even give you a car to drive for Uber. As a driver, you make money for driving people around town, and you get to work only when you feel like it. Uber does take a commission, and recently they're claiming you can make a minimum of $2,100 US per month if you do a certain number of rides. There's a second company you can drive for also called Lyft, L-Y-F-T, where drivers have said they make a lot more money because they get tips, although from what I've heard, Uber now allows tips. You can work for Uber or Lyft whenever you feel like it, And how much you make depends on how much you drive, during what hours you drive. For example, you can get paid more for driving during rush hour and times when fewer cars are available. Your income also depends on the city and county you live in. And country. This is a great way to supplement another part-time job or even be a full-time job when you have the aptitude for it. People in LA have commented they generally net about $15 to $18 an hour after the company takes its commissions. Now, bear in mind, there have been some complaints about Uber taking a lot more commission than they claim. So I'll let you do your research as this is kind of a dynamic field and Uber's regulations are always changing. For those of you crying foul of, hey man, Uber sucks, I'm not going to get rich off of that. Remember, this show isn't a get rich scheme. It's about living a flexible lifestyle and living on your terms. Second, translation services. Do you speak another language? Use it. There's so many places that can use your services. If you can get some sort of certification, that you're fluent or competent in a certain language, then even better, as that adds value to you. Check out freelance jobs at indeed.com. Also look at local court websites where you live, as they also usually have needs for translators 
which they provide to non-English speakers for immigration cases and things like that. Some of these translation jobs can pay quite well. Fiverr, that's spelled F-I-V-E-R-R dot com. If you haven't heard of Fiverr, you're missing out. Both as an entrepreneur who needs work done for their business, and as somebody who wants to make a bit of extra cash. Where do I start? Fiverr is a website where you sell your creative services. People sell everything from graphic design work, such as logo creation, to voiceovers, proofreading services, translation services, website design, and even audio or video editing. Do you want to be a social media manager? Post your service online, set your prices and start building your client base. And if you're good at a bunch of stuff, sell multiple services. Fiverr is a very popular and very useful service for people. I use it myself all of the time. Again, that's F-I-V-E-R-R dot com. If you think you're good at something, sell it. Uh... Now let's move on to what I call passive income. There's a big argument whether there is any such thing as passive income. This is supposed to be the easier money where you set something up that requires minimal involvement, but that yields you some sort of income every month or every year or however it is you set it up. A big example would be receiving a monthly payment from an investment you made or rental income from real estate you own. Let's start with Airbnb. Assuming you don't have a million dollars to invest in an apartment building, what you can do is list a room in your place for temporary rent on Airbnb. That's A-I-R-B-N-B dot com. I'm sure you've heard of it by now. You set the price and can even charge a cleanup fee as well as terms and conditions on how and who stays at your place. It's like Uber, except you're renting your place or part of it out. Many of my friends have done this and without having too much traffic, have managed to have their entire mortgage or rent payments paid entirely each month. If you're worried about the structure, most of the time the person coming in is just short term and on vacation so they're hardly there to begin with. Another great benefit to this is if you want to travel for a long period of time, you don't have to worry about what to do with your apartment or house. Do you break your lease early or leave it vacant and have to dip into your savings to pay rent while you travel so now you're paying a rental cost and a hotel? Worry no more. I believe there are even management or cleaning services you can hire independently to ensure the place is kept maintained while you're away. It's a great way to travel for longer periods at a time without having to worry about paying two sets of living expenses. As I've said, I've had many friends use it successfully as a great tool to gain some easy money relatively easy. One guy actually rents apartments so that he can sub-rent them as Airbnb places, and guess what? He turns a pretty nice profit every month, so much so he quit his day job. Let's look at a few examples. I have one friend who has a $600 a month car payment. He has an Audi, and while those aren't cheap to begin with, but it's not that uncommon in LA to have a pretty steep car payment. Well, guess what he did one month? He thought he'd experiment and try something new. He garaged his car, and then he decided to take Uber exclusively for that month. Well, an amazing thing happened. In going to home, work, the grocery store, in the course of a month, he spent less than 500 bucks. Well, if you take into account the $600 car payment, the insurance that goes with that car, and then the registration fees that go with that car, his car was really, when you think about it, with gas, probably costing him closer to $900, maybe even $1,000 a month when everything was said and done. So if you look at the cost of him actually just going around town in Uber as a passenger, he was saving a bucket load of money every month. And guess what? If he wanted to pick up and take off to Thailand for three weeks, he could. He wouldn't have to worry about having to pay his insurance on time. He wouldn't have to worry about paying his registration on time. It would just be a thing occupying his mind. Instead, he could go away, not have to worry about all this money being bled out at home for a car he's not using. Sounds good, right? Well, it is. Let's use another example. Let's use the Airbnb example. So you're renting your house or your, let's use an apartment even better. You're renting your apartment here in Los Angeles. Let's say your rent is $1,500 a month. Yeah, some of you are probably rolling your eyes saying, yeah, good luck living in LA for $1,500 a month in an apartment. Well, just work with me, will you? So you have your $1,500 a month payment. Now what happens if you want to take off for a soul searching vacation to, I don't know, Ubud, Bali? Well, you fly to Bali, but guess what's happening in the meantime at your apartment? You still have to pay your rent. So you fly to Bali, you've bought a plane ticket. Now you have to go, you know, rent a hotel or stay at a villa or whatever. So now you're paying airfare, you're paying for accommodation somewhere else. But guess what else you're doing? 
you still have to pay your rent back at the apartment. So what are you going to do? Gobble up two sets of expenses? If anything, that makes your life harder because instead of being, you know, carefree over an Ubud, drinking some, I don't know, pina coladas, now you have to be stressed out a little bit about how are you going to cover both sets of expenses. This ultimately impacts the bottom line of your vacation because now you have to worry about what's going on back home. And on top of that, you have to keep eating expenses and burning through savings, which will ultimately shorten your vacation. So what if you could just have your place rented out to somebody for a month or the two weeks or the three weeks you're gone? And who knows, maybe that's even enough to finance your trip. It's not a miracle solution, but it definitely takes the edge off. My friend does that all the time and she goes on long vacations and you know what? She thoroughly enjoys her vacations. And I know there's a lot of trepidation out there because you don't want somebody to come into your place and ruin it. Now, I can tell you something. I haven't had any problems with that myself and I've never had any friends have that problem. Because you get to screen who actually stays in your place, you get to read their reviews, and you don't have to take on anybody you don't want to. So, now that you have it down, you can travel or focus a bit more on your personal projects that aren't yet paying you any money. Remember, this is about the pursuit and realization of happiness. But while you're pursuing your side hustle, bills do need to get paid. These days, if you value your independence and freedom, using these part-time gigs to finance your projects and living expenses is a great way to start. In fact, you can use the same tools to live and travel cheap. Use Uber to get around instead of committing to a heavy car payment every month. Or when you travel, use Airbnb to keep your accommodation costs low. Whatever you're doing in your pursuit of happiness, remember, never, ever give up. Thank you for listening to our latest episode of Everglow. Check us out online at neilbartia.com, N-E-I-L-B-H-A-R-T-I-A.com for more blog articles and latest episodes. Leave any comments and likes below and we're happy to answer. Thank you for listening and see you next time.